Okay. We were discussing about augmented Lagrangian method in the previous class. And the goal for today's class is to talk about a specific class of augmented Lagrangian method, which is known as method of multipliers. So let me remind you what the definition for what the setting was. We want to solve x in capital X, h of x equals to 0. And the Lagrangian for this case is given by fx plus lambda transpose hx. And the augmented Lagrangian is given by this expression. I just add a penalty for violating the constraint. <clears throat> and what we had talked about in the previous class was, suppose you are minimizing the augmented Lagrangian with respect to x. So you pick some sequence lambda k, you pick some sequence ck such that ck is going to infinity. So you are putting more and more penalty on this, violating the constraint as k goes to infinity. You get a sequence xk, then xk actually converges to the optimal solution. So we had lambda k converges to lambda bar, ck grows to infinity, and we had xk equals to min or arg min of LC K X lambda K X in capital X. So if XK converges, then it converges to the optimal solution. You may, you may pick a sequence as that this XK will not converge, but we are not considering those situations. We are considering the situation where XK converges. So your algorithm converges, you have picked you have made a judicious choice of the sequences C, lambda k and c k so that your x k converges. And if that happens, then x k converges to the optimal solution. OK? Now we are going to this, this, was, this was the theorem we studied in the previous class. We didn't, of course, look at the proof, but this is a result, key result. Now today I'm going to talk about another key result which is going to give us an algorithm for free. So suppose xk satisfies gradient x lck xk lambda k norm is less than or equal to epsilon k. I'm making the following assumptions. Lambda k is bounded. This is hypothesis one. Hypothesis two is, well, actually, suppose that So I'm making a few hypotheses. So xk satisfies this condition. Lambda k is bounded. Ck goes to infinity. Epsilon k goes to 0 as k goes to infinity. And the third is xk converges to x bar such that gradient of hx bar is full rank.
So I'm making three key assumptions here. So let me add that this is the set X is in Rn. So this set X is in Rn. So I'm minimizing over the entire space. Okay, so the assumptions are slightly different from here. So here I wanted lambda k to be a convergent sequence to lambda bar. I wanted ck to go to infinity and I wanted xk to be the argument of lck. So this is, this xk is actually the argument for the augmented Lagrangian. Now I'm relaxing a few conditions. I want my lambda k to be bounded I still want my CK to go to infinity, but now I don't care about the minimization. All I'm requiring is that my first derivative of the augmented Lagrangian with respect to X should be small, okay? Epsilon K is a small number and my Epsilon K goes to zero. So I want, this is the stationary point, XK is a stationary point or almost a stationary point for the augmented Lagrangian. Now, of course, argument, is supposed to be a stationary point, but you could have other stationary points that are not argument, of course, right? They could be local minimum, for instance. So I've relaxed the conditions a little bit, and I'm making the assumption that xk is converging to a point, x bar, such that the gradient of hx bar is full rank. So this is rank m. Then, Lambda k plus c k h x k converges to lambda star or converges to lambda bar where lambda bar satisfies gradient x l x bar lambda bar equals to zero h of x bar equals to zero. Okay, so I'm not doing complete minimization, I'm just trying to compute a, 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 an approximately stationary point, xk. I'm picking a sequence lambda k which is bounded, I'm letting ck go to infinity. I want this epsilon k to, be, to, to go to zero, and I'm converging, my algorithm is converging to a point where the gradient of h at x bar at that point, limit point, is a full rank matrix. Then it turns out that if these conditions are satisfied, which seems pretty mild conditions and very easy to check in your algorithm, then lambda k plus c k h x k, this quantity converges to lambda bar, where lambda bar and x bar satisfies the first order necessary conditions for optimality. Remember, this is first order necessary conditions for optimality. Okay, so I get that for free as a limit of this particular uh, sequence, lambda k plus c k h x k. Now what I want you to do is stare at this particular theorem 
and then stare at this particular theorem and then try to come up with an algorithm which would work or which has the possibility of working. How would you come up, now that you know these two theorems, this xk converges to x bar implies x bar is optimal. And now you have another theorem there which says that this sequence converges to lambda bar which satisfies f o n c. What would that algorithm look like? <clears throat> what should we do? <clears throat> Choose an appropriate lambda case such that the condition one satisfied. And continue this process until we reach lambda one. Okay. But the question the problem is that how do you how do you pick lambda k? So let's say you pick x0 and you pick lambda 0. Now once you pick lambda 0, you can continue the gradient descent so that you reach a, a approximate stationary point of LCK, LC0, okay? Now the question is you have to figure out what lambda 1 should be, okay? So that you can then rerun the gradient descent and, and, and compute an approximate stationary point of LC1. So of course, you also need to figure out what C, C1 should look like, but here all I'm requiring C1 is to go to infinity. So you can just take C1 equals to 1, C2 equals to 2, C3 equals to 3 and so on. So the question really is how do you pick lambda, lambda 1? Once you know lambda 0 and once you know x0, how do you pick lambda 1? Perfect, right? So we can, so it seems to me by looking at this theorem that this thing converges to something that is very interesting. So why don't we try that? Like I know that this is converging to something interesting, so let's just take it to be the way to update lambda k. And that particular algorithm is known as method of multipliers. xk plus 1 equals to, uh, so you pick ck going to infinity and you have xk plus 1 equals to argmin. You don't really have to compute argmin as long as you are approximately optimal, it's fine. Oh, I think this should be xk. This is xk is argmin, and then lambda k gets updated. You already have c k plus one. Now you can compute xk plus one and redo the whole iteration again and again. Okay. What I would tell you is that this is a very, very powerful method and it has been used extensively in a lot of recent optimization literature in the past 10 or so, maybe 10 or 15 years, method of multipliers. You will see a lot of papers written on this particular topic, method of multipliers. So method of multipliers applied to 
consensus problem method of multipliers applied to distributed optimization problem method of multipliers applied to networking problem and so on and so forth. So it's a very powerful method. In all those situations, you have a large number of equality constraints. You have a complicated function f of x. Uh, typically, the minimization is over Rn. But you could potentially have a convex set over which you are trying to minimize the, uh, minimize the problem. And then the issue is you want to converge very fast. But in order to converge very fast, you need to update your lambda k so that the lambda k is converging to lambda bar. And then somebody discovered this theorem and used it here. Now you have a sequence lambda k that is converging quickly to lambda bar. And therefore, xk is converging very quickly to x star, which is, which is going to satisfy the first order necessary conditions for optimality. Now you know very well by now that in optimization, if you're using optimization algorithms, you can only converse to a point that satisfies f, o, and c. And if it is convex, you are good. You are in good shape because you get optimality for free. If you are non-convex, you just have a bad luck. You, you can't help it. This is pretty much what you can get in the limit. Yes? So after you get lambda j plus 1, what if it goes out of condition 1? Or there is no possibility of this? I mean, you always have to do the minimization. Well, OK, that's a good question. So this is all under the assumption that lambda k is bounded. Now you are running the code, and let's say your lambda k becomes unbounded, then what, what exactly is the problem? Well, the problem is you have an infeasible constraint. There is no way on Earth any point will satisfy all those constraints. This would typically happen when, so, so for instance, consider this situation where you, are a, you have a car, autonomous car, that's going on the road. And you have some equality constraint. You want the velocity to be something. And then a new car comes in front of you. Someone from the side comes in front of you. And you're, you cannot decelerate fast enough to not collide with the car. Now, of course, in your algorithm, you would pick the deceleration profile that would be possible to implement on the car. But the situation is such that the constraint, which is the distance with the car in front constraint, that will never be met. And in those situations, this lambda k will start shooting to infinity or minus infinity, depending on you know, the constraint that you have. So, so whenever you see, whenever you are running an optimization algorithm using method of multipliers, you always have to check if your lambda k is you know, becoming 10 raised to 6 or 10 raised to 10. In which case, it means that there is something wrong going on with your optimization algorithm itself. Or, or you may have a constraint that is not feasible. You, you, are, you are in a situation, in a sticky situation, where the constraints are not feasible at all. So you have to make that check within your optimization algorithm. If you don't, then whatever result you are going to get will be absurd, because you're not meeting any of the constraints. Does that make sense? Does that? Uh, so that's one of the debugging tools you will have to put in when you're applying method of multipliers. So your lambda k should be bounded. It should not go unbounded. And I think you had a similar question, right? What happens when lambda k goes unbounded? Or what was your question? I forgot your question. <laughs> uh, the question is that, so what is the, uh, I mean, this is a similar question. What is the condition one dissatisfied after I update my value? So th then you have to compute xk plus 1, right? So if you have updated lambda k, so this is lambda k plus 1. Now you use xk as the initial point to solve this minimization problem. And uh, you will probably take 5, 10, 15 gradient descent steps. And you would be close to satisfying this condition. And then you can uh, update your lambda k again. Yes, please. Whatever works best. Uh, typically, CK, you would want to pick CK 
plus 1 to be 1.1 CK. Like this is what I do when I'm writing the code. Uh, it just makes sense for me. I don't want to increase CK very rapidly. Um, because even with 1.1, after running 100 iterations, this would be 1.1 raised to 100, which would be a large number. So it would be a large number. So I don't want my CK to blow up so that the computer starts giving absurd answers. Now I'm going to show you some uh, numerical example where what I'm going to tell you in, in just two minutes, I'm going to start a numerical example. What I'm going to tell you is that even if you pick C to be a constant, you would converge, but you would converge much faster if you let C to grow to infinity. Okay, so you can control the speed of convergence by increasing the value of C or letting, the C, letting C be constant. So let's try to uh, do that example. It's a very simple example. Uh, before that, any other questions on this statement? This is the method of multipliers uh, algorithm. And we are just going to do a quick example showing that this method of multipliers converge to a stationary point. Okay, no questions, so I'm going to erase the board. I want to minimize half of x1 square plus x2 square such that x1 is equal to 1. Okay, it's a convex problem with linear constraint, so the first order necessary conditions would be optimal and my x star is 0, 0,1 my lambda star is minus one. I am going to write it as x1 minus one equals to zero. How do you get this result? Well, this comes from Lagrange multiplier theorem. You apply the LMT, Lagrange multiplier theorem on this problem and you get that answer. Okay, now I need to construct step one. I need to construct the augmented Lagrangian. So LC of X lambda is given by, oh, this X is in R2. Okay, so this is my augmented Lagrangian. Uh, is it a convex problem for every c greater than zero? So I'm, I'm going to pick c greater than zero. What do you think? Is it a convex problem? Convex and x. I, I don't, I'm not doing optimization with respect to lambda. I only have to optimize with respect to x. So what do you think? Is it convex with respect to x? Okay, good. <laughs> I was getting worried. <laughs> okay, this is convex with respect to x. So this is a convex function. This is a linear function. This is a convex function. You have sum of three convex function. It's a convex function in x. So how do I compute the argmen argmen of L C K x lambda k? 
x in R n. So I need to compute the argument, the unconstrained minimum. I've, remember, I have a constrained problem, but here I have to solve an unconstrained problem for the augmented Lagrangian. So I can actually just take the first derivative, set it equal to 0, and I can get the value of xk. So let's compute the first derivative. Let me put it as step 2. So gradient of x lck. OK, now, now, now comes the difficult part. Now I have to compute the gradient. Uh, I hope I don't make a mistake. So I have x1 plus lambda plus c x1 minus 1. And I have x2, and that's it. I'm going to set it equal to 0 at the optimal solution. <clears throat> OK, now, what is x1 star here? I need to compute xk. What is the value of xk? 1 over lambda minus c. No, this should be lambda k and this should be ck. So I have lambda k minus ck over 1 plus ck 0. I hope all of you are convinced that this is. Oh, yeah, that's right, ck minus lambda k. Thank you. What is now step three? So I've computed xk. I've computed the argument of the augmented Lagrangian at time k. Now. I have to find lambda k plus 1. So what is h of x k? Uh, x1 minus 1. So that is c k minus lambda k over 1 plus c k minus 1. OK, so that is minus 1 minus lambda k over 1 plus CK. Yeah, this looks good. OK, so this is my H of XK, so my lambda K plus 1 is equal to lambda k plus ck h of xk, which is given by lambda k plus ck minus 1 minus lambda k over 1 plus ck. Can someone tell me what this expression looks like?
Lambda k minus c k over 1 plus c k. Okay. <coughs> so what happens when c k goes to infinity? Suppose I'm, I'm, remember my, my algorithm is my ck has to go to infinity. So as a function of ck and lambda k, I have xk and a function of ck, I have lambda k or lambda k plus one. So what happens if ck goes to infinity? Let me write it in another way. 1 plus, no, 1 over 1 plus ck lambda k minus ck over 1 plus ck. Yes, there was something I heard, yeah. It becomes minus 1 or something? It becomes minus 1, so this term will go to 0 because 1 over, so ck is going to infinity, so 1 over infinity is 0. So the influence of lambda k will be very, very small as k goes to infinity. And this term is going to be minus infinity over infinity, which is equal to minus, well, I shouldn't say minus infinity over infinity is minus one, but in this case, the limit is minus one. So lambda k converges to minus one as k goes to infinity. Right? That is exactly my lambda star, okay? So lambda k converges to lambda star. Sorry? Yeah, you can do that, you will get the same answer. Okay. So what we have seen so far, after step three is completed, I have let ck go to infinity, so I see that lambda k converges to minus one, which is exactly equal to lambda star. Now, I let ck go to infinity, I know that lambda k converges to minus one. So what is this term going to be? What is xk going to converge to? So, right. So 1, 0. So ck goes to infinity, lambda k goes to minus 1, and this is 1, and this is of course ck going to infinity. So I have ck over ck, which is equal to 1 as k goes to infinity, which is exactly what x star is, what the optimal solution is. <coughs> Okay, everyone happy with this example? So what we have seen is that method of multiplier is correct. It has to be. <laughs> uh, it converges, in the convex case, it converges to the optimal solution. And this is a convex problem. Now, so that was one part of the story. So the first part of the story is I'm going to let CK go to infinity. Now the second part of the story is I'm not going to let CK go to infinity. I'll just pick CK, which is a large number sufficiently large number. So, oh, this should be one zero actually. Because x one is supposed to be one and x two can be zero. Sorry about that. Okay. So I'm going to push this equation here so that I have all the expressions in one place. So I have lambda k plus 1 equals to 1 over 1 plus ck lambda k minus c 
CK over 1 plus CK. Okay, now just assume that CK is identically equals to C and C is greater than 0. So I pick a C which is greater than 0 and I'm, I'm not going to change the value of CK. I'm just going to keep it constant. Do you think the sequence will converge? If C, CK is greater than 0, what happens to the sequence? Do you think it's going to converge? So what does this expression look like? It's lambda k plus 1 equals to a lambda k plus b, where a is strictly less than 1. Do sequences of this type converge? And if they do, what do they converge to? So let's write it down, OK? Because once you write it down, uh, it will become very clear. So I have lambda 1, which is a lambda 0 plus b. I have lambda 2, which is a square lambda 0 plus ab plus b. Lambda 3 and so on. And remember, a is less than 1. So what does the sequence converge to? Lambda k? No. Okay, let me write it uh, in the following way. So lambda k will be a raised to k lambda 0 plus b 1 plus a plus a raised to k minus 1. Right, that's what it turns out to be by induction. <clears throat> so, what does this converge to as k goes to infinity? So this is an infinite series. This is a multiplier. So b remains b. And this becomes an infinite series, 1 plus a, well, a geometric series, 1 plus a plus a square plus a cube plus blah, blah, blah. So lambda k converges to b over 1 minus a. Right? So this particular geometric series converges to 1 over 1 minus a as k goes to infinity. Okay, I'll let you guys think about it. What, I, what I'm trying to get at is, what's the limit of lambda k? I want to find the limit of lambda k of this sequence when ck is equal to c for all k. Can I erase this part? I'm going to erase this. And I'm going to rewrite this equation as lambda k plus 1 equals to 1 over 1 plus c lambda k minus c over 1 plus c. So this is my b. This is my a. So what is b over 1 minus a? It will be minus 1, yeah, minus 1. So b has a negative sign there. So lambda k converges to minus 1. 
So even when I'm not letting C go to infinity, my lambda k actually converges to the, to the optimal Lagrange multiplier, uh, uh, to the Lagrange multiplier. And I'm going to substitute that lambda k here. And this CK is C, this is C. So I have C plus one over one plus C, uh, which is equal to one zero, which is the optimal solution. So what I'm illustrating here is if we increase the value of C, if we keep the value of C constant, I'm going to convert geometrically fast to minus one, to the optimal solution. That speed is going to be geometric. However, if I'm going to uh, increase the value of C, this lambda k term, this lambda k iteration is going to converge very quickly to lambda star and therefore, I will converge very quickly to x star. So by increasing the value of C, I'm able to increase the speed of convergence in this particular problem. Okay, so that's the outcome of this whole complicated analysis. If you increase C, you will converge very fast. If you keep C constant, you're gonna converge slowly. I mean, it's not that slow, it's still geometrically fast. But comparatively, it is uh, slower than what, when C was growing linearly. Not linearly, but yeah, when CK was, uh, you let CK to grow to infinity, then you are converging very fast. <clears throat> Any questions so far? Yes, please. Right. So what about k k this one, so since a is less than one, this term is going to zero. So a is less than one, so this term will go to zero as k goes to infinity. Okay. Any other question? Okay. I have used, like I mentioned, I have used method of multipliers quite extensively in some of the optimization codes that I've written. And I really love this method because during the optimization, I can check whether I'm going in the right direction or not. And the way to check it is if my lambda k is growing to infinity or my lambda k is converging to some value. So if it converges, everything is going fine. If it grows to infinity, I have an infeasibility in my problem. And so I go back and I can make corrections to the problem so that there are no further infeasibilities. So it's just a very nice, there is a nice debugging tool inbuilt within this method of multipliers approach. <clears throat> so, you know, you have formulated, so you formulate the problem in your head and then you start typing the code and you don't think whether the problem that you have formulated is going to be feasible or not. And uh, one of the most recent cases has been, actually it, it happened yesterday. So it's a complicated affair. So when I talk about dynamic programming, I'll come back to it. I've been talked about dynamic programming, but we were using some approximate function here in a sequence of optimization. And what happened was that because I was using not the true function, but an approximation of the function, my constraints became invalid after running the iteration for like two, three time steps. So, so in that situation, I, I had, I, I encountered a situation where my constraints were not satisfied. Uh, it was an EV charging, electric vehicle charging problem. So there was no feasible way to allocate electricity to electric vehicles because I was using an approximation of the objective function, not the true objective function. Because the true objective function was too difficult to calculate. It would take uh, millions of years for us to calculate the true objective function. So 
We just used an approximation and it led to some problems in the optimization. So the problem that we were trying to solve, me and my student were trying to solve, uh, this dimension was like 50 dimension constraint and the number of optimization variables were also about 50 dimensions and the objective function was pretty complicated. So it was a very high dimensional problem and there was no way for us to figure out if I had just looked at the problem, I wouldn't have known that there is an infeasibility sitting within that problem. It's only after looking at the Lagrange multipliers that we figured that there is an infeasibility here. Okay. Does it only mean that you uh, are violating a constraint, or there might be other reasons? In 99.9% .9 of the cases, it is violating the constraint. Now, 1% of the cases, you could have round off errors or something like that. I just haven't encountered them in my life. It's uh, mostly infeasibility that affects this uh, problem. Any other question? Yes, please. How do you figure out which constraint is infeasible? And then oh, so yeah, that's a great point. So you, your lambda k is, so when I said there were 50 such constraints, then lambda k is 50 dimensional object. And you can just pick which of the constraints is going to infinity or minus infinity. So it could go either way. And, and that's how we figured that, okay, these are the constraints that are becoming infeasible. And that's because we were using some approximation of the function. <clears throat> Any other question? Okay. So in the next class, I'm going to talk about what is known as sequential quadratic program. And sequential quadratic program is a optimization solver where you have a complicated optimization problem with equality constraints and inequality constraints. And what you do is you transform them into a sequence of quadratic programs. Now we know how to solve quadratic programs because uh, we have studied uh, manifold suboptimization methods and uh, conditional gradient method and gradient projection methods, all of those methods could be applied to uh, sequential quadratic programs, uh, sorry, for solving quadratic programs. So I have a complicated optimization problem. I transform them to a sequence of quadratic programs. I know how to solve quadratic programs. So I will solve them. And in the limit, I will get the solution to my original optimization problem. So we will, we will study that particular algorithm on Monday. So thank you for your attention. See you on Monday. <clears throat>